Welcome on in Cougar Tracks podcast powered by KSL Sports. Dot com, com. Good afternoon to all of you in Cougar Nation. Happy Friday. Hope it's a great one for you getting ready for the Memorial Day weekend. And we've got a lot to get to on today's edition of the Cougar Tracks podcast. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the show on Apple, Google Play, Spotify. Leave a rating and a review. Or if you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Subscribe to all the KSL Sports socials and make sure to tune in live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at high noon mountain time doing this 52 weeks out of the year all the time talking BYU sports here on the Cougar Tracks podcast. Here's a roadmap of what we got for today's show. Cahill Fennell is the new assistant coach for BYU basketball. I'll share my thoughts on that hire. Also, BYU basketball's survivors. What does that mean? I'll go into that a little bit more. Just getting ready for an interview I have lined up for Cougar Sports Saturday. And then BYU football kick times. I'm glad to be on the show today because, man, I, I had to get pulled away from all the mom talk drama <laughs> on TikTok, social media, on Reddit. Holy cow, that's juicy. Are you following all the mom talk nonsense? It's juicy, man. It is just some crazy stuff. And the thing that's wild, too, is a lot of the people are, you know, Utah County, probably some BYU fans, BYU alums, maybe. <laughs> it's wild. You, you mix the LDS culture plus influencer culture plus all these subcultures that maybe have to do with pineapples. I don't know. It's wild, though. Mom talks crazy. Anyway, let's get into it. Cahill Fennell uh, announced as the new assistant coach for BYU. I think it's a good hire because he's got power six experience from his time at Louisville. Three seasons with the Cardinal as the director of basketball operations one year as a full-time assistant coach. I think what's interesting about this hire is that he brings that, that wealth of experience at one of the great basketball programs in the country. Louisville basketball is top shelf in terms of brands and college hoops. It's a great basketball brand. So I like that aspect. I like the, the hire as a whole. I think it's good. I think one of the concerns is maybe just the limitations on recruiting connections, things like that, because he's only been a full-time assistant for two years, one year at Portland State under Barrett Peary for the Vikings, and then one year under Chris Mack at Louisville. But really, I, I think that this is a up-and-coming guy in coaching. He's only been coaching for about eight years. He's a young guy, riser in the college basketball world. These are the type of hires you want to make. I think when you get to the Big 12 Conference, in an ideal world, you would like to get maybe a former head coach or a head coach in a mid-major league to join a staff as an associate head coach or something along those lines. But I think Fennell is a, is a good hire, fits what BYU needs, and I think he's going to be someone that's aggressive in recruiting. That's all you can ask for. I think it's all, to me, in his role, it all comes down to recruiting. It's not necessarily about X's and O's. If you're an up-and-coming guy in the profession, what can you do on the recruiting trail? What connections can you bring that are new? The new personality? How can you can, can relate to players? That's what it comes down to to me. We will talk with Cahill Fennell uh, coming up tonight at 4 p.m. The media will speak with him. So a little bit of a Friday news dump, if you will, with uh, Fennell. But I'm excited to chat with him and, and get to know him. I, I think that it'll be a, a good situation all parties involved. And I've been saying this on the show for multiple weeks. I feel like a broken record at times. But again, no need to panic. Mark Pope knows what he's doing. I think people like the Cahill hire. You know, Chris Burgess was a loss. Yes. But are you knocking this? No. And I think it's another example, too, that Mark Pope runs his BYU basketball program in a way 
that we've never seen before. I think a lot of times with BYU basketball, it was kind of narrow-minded, thinking, you know what, uh, these limitations will hold us back, this and that, the whole us being speaking as the, the coaches and, and people around BYU. And there's always this thought of, well, these are the limitations, and you know they know their role in the, the world of college basketball. I don't think Mark Pope looks at it that way. You know, you got to remember Mark Pope had opportunities to go to other programs before he took the job at BYU. He was kind of a, a he was a, you know, wanted man by some, some good programs out West in college basketball. And he always said that he wouldn't take the BYU job. He would not have taken, the, taken the job. If he didn't believe he could win big. I think that he believes that he can definitely win big and he's shown he can win big. Uh, I mean, each of the three seasons he's led have had some incredible highs, incredible moments. And I think that still there's a lot of better days ahead for Mark Pope. I think the issue now for BYU basketball is what will they look like in a power six league? Night in, night out, 20 game schedule in a power conference. How's that going to look? How are they going to fare in that setup? Because there's been so many nights in the West Coast Conference where you, you're going to win. It's just, you're going to show up, you're going to play Portland. I know Portland's getting better with Shantae Leggins, but in the past, Portland with Terry Porter, you're going to win that game. That is not the case with any opponent in the Big 12. Not one. Maybe UCF. Maybe. Cincinnati, good basketball history. Houston's a... Might be the number one team in the country next season in their final year in the AAC. So I think that's the challenge. I think that's where there's a little bit of concern maybe festering for the BYU fan base, but I don't think you should be worried. I think Mark Pope's going to do the necessary things to get it done and, and improve the program the way he sees fit. I, th I think Mark Pope has done a good job this offseason. I do. I mean, maybe I'm in the minority with that take, but I, I look at what they lost from a personnel perspective and what they've gained so far, and what they could potentially gain, I think next year's team will end up being better. I believe that. I do. And I think that last year, the best locker room in America took a massive hit. And I got an interview coming up tomorrow. You're going to want to listen to it on Cougar Sports Saturday. Trevin Nell, BYU basketball guard, hopped onto the program pre-recorded interview with him yesterday and Trevin talked about the best locker room in America taking a hit and it just it felt it had a different vibe last season now him and guys like Foos, Atiki, Spencer Johnson, Trey Stewart they've started a group text and they've called themselves the survivors they're the guys that that lasted. There was a lot of uncertainty for those guys. They're like, are, are you staying? Are you going? Gideon George is back. They're, they're all the survivors. And I just think this experience, this offseason, with a lot of change from a roster standpoint, personnel, the coaching staff, I think in the long run, it'll be good. I've, I'm always a believer that sometimes you take a few steps back, you're going to be better in the long run. I think that's going to be the case for BYU. Because really, up until about December 1st, 2021, it had always been rosy for Mark Pope. I mean, honestly, what could you knock about Mark Pope other than maybe the BYU-UCLA game in the NCAA tournament? That was the only moment where you could knock the man. Everything else had just gone completely rosy. Then they lose to UVU, Gavin Baxter gets hurt, and it just seemed like everything's changed. And then... That Santa Clara loss was just the death knell, and it seemed like there, the program was in a funk every moment afterwards. BYU is going to be okay, and I think they're going to be better for it. They're going to take some losses next year. It's a tough schedule. they got Battle for Atlantis. They've got Creighton, who's going to be you know maybe a top three team next year. they got that kid, uh, Baylor. Gosh, I can't remember his last name. His first name's Baylor. Transferred from South Dakota State. He's going to be legit. He withdrew from the NBA draft. But I just think BYU basketball is going to be better next year. I do. Still got two roster spots, and I think that's where Cahill Fennell uh, steps in and maybe helps 
put BYU over the finish line and getting those guys. They're still waiting on on Aiken from Arizona, the transfer there. I think he would be a nice add from a defensive perspective. And then get one more big, and I think you're good. I think the, the return missionaries with Dallin Hall, he's going to be a baller. I mean, Donovan Mitchell himself said the kid's a hooper. You going to argue with Donovan Mitchell? Rudy Gobert does. All right. BYU football. Kick times released. I talked about it earlier in the week. I was wrong on my predictions. I thought for sure it'd be like a 10 a.m. South Florida kick, but it ends up being 2 p.m. Mountain Time, 4 o'clock Eastern. BYU and South Florida get to kick it off in 99 days. That is going to be scorching hot. I'm already sweating. You can see me on the on the video screen. I'm like sunburned already. I'm like this this reddish hue. I'm already fried. I'm sweating thinking about that heat. And honestly, I think that's advantage South Florida. That South Florida game is going to be a little bit worrisome. <laughs> Week ones, man. I, I would I think it would be an impressive statement, as I've said in previous podcasts. If BYU could go into Tampa and just blow the doors off the Bulls, just wreck them. Just, just beat them by two or three touchdowns and just dominate them. Cover the spread. I think that would be huge because week ones are tricky. USF is going to do everything they can to have that element of surprise. It's the only week in the season that they have it. They're going to utilize everything they can. They're going to throw everything at BYU to try to win that football game. That's going to be a tough one. It kicks off at 2 p.m. Mountain Time on ESPNU and KSL News Radio, your legacy home of the BYU Cougars. Baylor also got announced 815 kick, a little bit of a glimpse into what life might look like as a member of the Big 12 Conference. So coming up next week, a little bit of a programming note. I will be down in Texas for the Big 12 AD meetings. So I'll be down there in Texas covering all of those, looking forward to that, catching up with some of the Big 12 people down there and getting a glimpse into the future of the league. And the TV contract is something that's definitely going to be, I think, discussed. Negotiations for the Big 12, their TV deal cannot start until February of 2024. So there's still time. But there would be nothing better for the Big 12 if, BYU has a big season this year, and the TV ratings for BYU Baylor in 815 Mountain, 915 Central did well. This is a nice kind of temperature check to see what's the market. What does this look like? Because win or lose for BYU, you're playing a future Big 12 rival. And for Baylor, you're going to probably be 1-0 because you play a nobody in week one. This is a future Big 12 game, a road game. How interested is your fan base in this type of matchup? It's an important game. I think every Cougar fan, you got to tune in to that one. That's going to be a packed house, but I think the, the viewership's got to be a big number because then that could be tangible data to say, okay, February 2024, look at this type of viewership. For a Big 12 game at night, mountain time zone, you're the one league that can have three time zones and you have four windows. You could go with the 10 a.m. mountain kick. You could go with the 1.30 p.m. You could go with 4 o'clock. You can go 5 o'clock. And then you can go 8.15, 8.30. It's the only league in college football that will have that as an option. I, I've felt at the Big 12 conference, this new league, they've got to be willing to play on Thursdays. I think with the NFL going to Amazon, it creates an opportunity for linear television. And I know it's all about streaming straight to consumer. I get that. That's where it's going, at least. But there's still a market for the linear platforms. And Thursday nights could be the Big 12 opportunity. That could be the league where Thursday night football in the college football space, it's Big 12. There's just got to be a willingness and a creativity that this conference has got to have. And, and I think they got to maximize those four window kick time windows to the fullest and be the only league that goes from sun up to sundown 
So BYU and Baylor, 815 on ESPN should be a nice temperature check on where the viewership lies for a game like that. And I've always said, too, that I feel like the BYU fan base is going to grow significantly going into the Big 12. You no longer can say, well, BYU doesn't play big boy football. They've been told they're second rate being an independent. They don't have any friends. They're, they're part of the big boys club now. And now they're working in a league that's going to have a chip on its shoulder that's like, let's go. Let's go. Let's go prove the doubters wrong. That's a great game. And I think it'd be a best case scenario. Great viewership. Have a game that goes down to the wire. BYU wins it. But it's a heck of a football game. That's what you need. Like the, the Big 12 needs that sort of thing to happen right now. Oregon. BYU and Oregon in Eugene. First time the Cougars are traveling up to Autzen Stadium since 1990. September 17th. I just booked my flight for Eugene. I'll be flying directly into Eugene. So, Cougar fans, which game are you going to be going to on the road? I think that's a cool game. It's, it's weird, once again, that it's going to be a one-off. BYU is going to get $1.1 million to play the Ducks. It's going to be on network television, on Fox. Like, that, again, screams, why is BYU in a money game with Oregon? Like, how many money games end up on network television? Usually, the, the, the money games, Power 5 teams are paying off some schmuck. They don't end up on Fox. They don't end up on NBC, ABC. Please. Just further evidence that there that should not have been a money game. It should have been a home and home. But 130 on Fox. BYU hasn't played on Fox since 2018. Kalani Satake teams have not fared well on Fox. They lost 2018 to Washington. Remember, that was a beatdown. That was a beatdown. BYU was 3-1. and one. They were nationally ranked. They go up to Montlake and just get steamrolled by Washington. I think Washington was the Pac-12 champ that year. 35 to seven and BYU's only touchdown, I think was, what was it? A block punt. It was a scoop and score, something along those lines. It was just awful. It was like LSU just a little bit better, but it was, it was pretty much the same deal. It kind of opened the door for Tanner Mangum to lose his job as a starting QB and open the door for Zach Wilson. And then the other time in the Kalani era, BYU was on Fox was 2016 against Utah. They lost that game too. First drive of the game, I think BYU throws a pick six. You're thinking, holy cow, it's the Vegas ball all over again. Anyway, Utah State, a Thursday night. You, you hear that? You know, Thursday once again. I think Thursday is going to become a bigger marketplace for college football once again. It kind of it was falling off the grid. Thursday nights were not a thing, and, and evidenced by BYU schedules. Uh, BYU under Kalani has only played twice on Thursdays. Like, BYU of old, under Lavelle, under Crow, and Thursday night was the spot. I mean, BYU football was always on Thursdays. They were kind of one of the founders of Thursday night football from their time playing San Diego State back in the early 90s, and then Colorado State after that. BYU was a founder, like Virginia Tech, of Thursday night football and college football. I think with the NFL going to Amazon, there's a chance again for college football to get back into that space a little bit more. BYU and Utah State, the last game for the foreseeable future in the battle for the old wagon wheel, kicks off at 6 o'clock on ESPN. Primetime, ESPN. I think you just hope that BYU's nationally ranked, got a good record. There you go. Notre Dame, 5.30 p.m. on KSL 5 TV. We already knew about that one. East Carolina, a weeknight game, 6 p.m. on ESPN2. And then Utah Tech, 1.30 on BYU TV in November. No surprise there. BYU TV always gets the FCS game. They've had a few FBS games. And in 2017, they had San Jose State. 2015, they had Fresno State when Fresno was a one-team or one-win team. Might be the last BYU TV game for a long time. Unless the Big 12 Conference includes BYU TV in some capacity, BYU TV could be 
out of sight and out of mind when it comes to ever televising a BYU game again. That will be interesting, too, with the future TV deal. You know, third-tier rights, how will that look? I just think on the surface, the Big 12 wants to be having uniformity. They don't want to make some one-off deals because they know where that led before with Texas. And BYU is not going to be a Texas. They're not going to be demanding. I think Tom Homo, honestly, is going to fall in line for, as what he said to the Oklahoman, what's good for the conference. He's going to follow the line. I mean, there's there's no doubt about it. But, uh, you know, in the past, when I was working for another employer, Michael Miner, former BYU broadcasting guy, he did say that, you know, another television station could be housed there. You, you just wonder if a straight-to-consumer product could maybe be launched out of Provo, BYU broadcast, it could help with something like that for the Big 12. There's Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus, but you know, ESPN plus you probably need to sign up for that. If you're a Cougar fan, cause that's where BYU basketball will likely reside most of the time during big 12 play. And occasionally for a big 12 football game beginning in 2023, but that's the schedule right now for kick times. Wyoming did not get a kick time designated. I think that's in large part because Wyoming, they could be an absolute train wreck with how many teams or players they've lost to the transfer portal. That might be a game that just ends up on ESPNU. In most years, it would be an ESPN2 game. If they had a quarterback like Josh Allen, it'd probably be an ESPN game. But Wyoming just doesn't move the needle one bit. And you probably throw that on an 830 ESPNU game. And my good friend Jeff Hansen, Rakutu10 on Twitter, <laughs> he brought up a good point. ESPNU games are weird. It's one of the reasons why the USF game should take on uh, kind of a weird vibe. Think about 2013 Virginia, the season opener, loss. 2020 Coastal Carolina, loss. 2018 Northern Illinois, loss. Liberty in 2019, win by one possession over Liberty. ESPNU games, man, they are weird. <laughs> It's ESPNU and CBS Sports Network. Some of the worst moments in BYU football history over the last six or seven years, I swear, have happened on CBS Sports Network. Think about it. That loss at South Florida three years ago. The loss to ECU in 2017. Um, Utah State in 2017. Just weird performances on CBS Sports Network. I think uh, San Jose State in 2015 was a close call. Weird games, man. CBS Sports Network. It's always like a Dave Ryan. <laughs> the NFL draft analyst guy, Corey Chavis. The, the Jinx channel for BYU back in the day was what? Versus? Yeah, it's a versus game. Chalk it up as an L. BYU TCU on versus. That's a loss. That's a loss. And that's going to do it for this edition of the Cougar Tracks podcast. Again, Cahill Fennell is going to be talking to the media coming up tonight at 4 p.m. Mountain Time. We'll have a recap of that. I'll put up a video on the KSL Sports YouTube and also the Twitter feeds. So we'll get a full recap there. And after that, enjoy the rest of your Memorial Day weekend. Cougar Sports Saturday will be live from noon to 3 We'll have Trevanel on the program. We'll also have a look in at Zach Wilson, how he's faring at Jets OTAs. So we'll discuss that as, as well. That's coming up tomorrow on Cougar Sports Saturday from noon to three on KSL News Radio, your legacy home of the Cougars. I will be back on Monday here on Cougar Tracks at high noon. And then next week, I will be coming to you live from Texas the Big 12 AD meeting. So I'm looking forward to that. I will catch you next time here on the Cougar Tracks podcast. It's always powered by kslsports.com. Hey.